Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into the scope of the variables with respect to lambdas. So I have this class definition here. So let's go over and dissect it to see what I have written. So the class has an instance variable called global default. The class has a main method and within the main method I have a variable called default size and then it also has a definition of a lambda in this case it's a predicate and the lambda takes an input a single variable s and within the lambda body it also has a local variable called local default size and the lambda body has an expression and we are returning the value of the expression that expression is accessing s s is the parameter that expression also has a access to the local default size which is local to the lambda body it can also read default size now default size is outside of the lambda body but still we can read the value and similarly the global default is even outside the method so it's at the instance level or the class level so lambda body is able to read that variables value as well so Overall, a lambda body has access or has a read access to its parameters, to its local variable. The variable outside of the lambdas may be in the method or even at the class level. So that is the crux of this particular expression. Later in the video, we will discuss about writing the value. Like say if I have to set the value and we'll see what all things are possible and how do lambda behaves when we want to write a variable but before that let's dissect the parameters a little more because you might get questions in the exam around that on this slide you see three predicates so p1 it takes a x parameter into the lambda's body and the type of the parameter is explicitly mentioned the second predicate we have not mentioned the type of the parameter explicitly. I have already discussed in part two of the series that the type of the input parameters is not mandatory. So in this case, we do not have a type. In the third case, we don't have a type explicitly, but we have used the keyword var. So var is a keyword in Java where the type of the variable is inferred by the value that is stored in a variable. In the exam, you might get p2 or p3 and then you might have to identify what is the type of the variable if you remember from my previous video the type of the variable that goes into the test method is same as the type of the predicate so which in this case is string now let's jump on to the next slide in this case we are not assigning the lambda directly to a variable but it is being passed to a method called who am i and whose definition is given below the way methods are called in java so this expression is very similar to writing consumer integer c is equal to and then the lambda and now again the type of the variable x is integer because that is the type of the consumer in some of the cases not all but some of the cases you won't even need to know the method which it we are calling like you don't need to know the signature of the method which is being called for example in this case we are passing a lambda expression don't worry what the expression is doing we are passing a lambda expression into the sort method now the definition of sort method is not provided however you can still derive the type of the variable x and y in this case so we are calling the sort method onto a list variable and that list variable is of type list integer so by the name it looks like we are trying to sort the integers which are stored in a list hence the type of the variable x and y will be integer that are all the examples you need to know from the type inference type of question now let's look into local variables so local variable of a lambda body is a variable that is declared within the body so in this case a lambda is defined which is taking a and b as parameters 
and within the body we are defining a local variable called c so we are saying int c is equal to zero and we are simply returning five although most of the lambda functions you will see or use are single line but having multiple lines and having local variables in lambda is perfectly valid java syntax now look at this lambda expression in this lambda expression in the body we are trying to declare a variable a and assign a value this will fail and the reason is that we already have a variable called a which is in the parameters so you need to be careful of the signature of the lambdas to identify these kind of issues now let's jump into intellij and see what kind of error we will get if we do write this kind of code this is the same code that we have seen in the slide number one before so in the lambda body here i'm going to redeclare the variable s and assign a value null doesn't matter what i assign so it gives an error saying variable s is already defined in the scope and the reason is the scope of s is available within those curly braces and we are trying to redeclare the variable with the same name so this is very similar to redeclaring a local variable so i'll just copy paste the local variable code and as you see the error i get is exactly same so the point is that we cannot redeclare a parameter or a local variable with the same name now let's see what happens if i try to redeclare a variable that is outside of the body it is within the method but it is outside of the lambda body so as you see we get an error and the error is variable default size is already defined in the scope so essentially same error now let's try to see with the variable that is at the instance level we have previously seen on the slide number one or even here that we are able to read the variable which is at the instance level let's try to redeclare it so i'll copy paste it and since we can't have static local variables i'm going to remove static from the main method and also static declaration from the instance variable just for the demonstration purpose as you see the code passes it doesn't fail no compilation error and the reason is that we can have a local variable of the same name as instance variable so it's not a lambda concept even in a general methods we can have a variable which can be named same as instance variable it's just a normal local variable let me get rid of it as we don't need it anymore so far we have seen that the reading of the variables within the lambda body we can read the variable which is local we can read the parameters we can read the variable which is outside of the body but within the method and we can also read the variable which is outside of the method which is instance variable and when it comes to redeclaration we cannot redeclare a local variable we cannot redeclare a parameter and we cannot redeclare a variable that is outside of the lambda body but within the main method but we can redeclare or at least it appears to be that we can redeclare a variable which is at the instance level but effectively that's not redeclaring it's just declaring a local variable which happens to be of the same name as instance variable now the next one let's see what are the different variables that we can set within the lambda body let's start with the local variable so of course as you see since they are local we can obviously set the value within the body now moving on to the parameters let's try to set the value of s to something else and as you see the compilation will pass so effectively what we are doing is it doesn't matter what is being passed us when the predicate is being called we are always hard coding the value of s to something else even though logically it doesn't make sense but still syntax wise it's fine it will compile and also run okay now moving one level above let's try to reassign a value to a variable that is outside of the body but within the main method so i get an error so the error is variable used in lambda expression should be final or effectively final so i'll explain you what does it mean and why we see this error but before that let me actually move one level above again and also try to assign a value of global default which is the instance variable 
to something else within the lambda body now as you see when we are reassigning a value to an instance variable it's allowing fine so we are not getting any error the reason why one works and the other one doesn't is the way how the variable is provided in the lambda body a local variable is provided as a copy but an instance variable is provided by reference so before i explain further let me actually comment the local variable and since i have updated the value here as 15 let me go ahead and execute the lambda and then later on after i execute it i'm going to print the value of the global default value let me also bring back the static otherwise the program wouldn't run now save and run the program so in here you see the global default value is 15 and that 15 we have set in the lambda's body so that means that global defaults reference is passed and then lambda is able to modify its value however that's not the case when a local variable is passed when a local variable is passed a copy is passed and java does not want a lambda to modify a copy otherwise the value of the variable will become stale and hence we get the compilation error if we try to update the value of a local variable and what's more interesting is it's not that we are not allowed to modify the value of a local variable within the lambda body if a local variable is used within the lambda body which is if it is read within the lambda body we cannot change the value even after the definition of the lambda body so it's effectively same as writing a variable as final we don't have to explicitly write final but you cannot modify a value that is all i wanted to discuss in this video in the next video i'm going to discuss a special type of lambdas called method references if you like this video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified for my upcoming new uploads thank you so much until next time bye bye